What's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. So the demo for Raynaudis dropped today and thankfully I had some free time to go check it out. Since Nisa is the one publishing this, it's been on my radar for quite a while, but I never really looked into it all that much. I haven't even seen any trailers for the game either. But hey, from the little I did see, the game looked kinda cool. And after playing the demo, I can say for sure that the game is interesting to say the least but enough talking let's get straight to it so first off what's this game even about well basically it's a bunch of magic people fighting in the streets at night wait why does that sound so familiar but seriously the basic premise is that in this world there are people who after some kind of traumatic event like almost dying or well actually dying awaken abilities to use magic these people are called wizards there's three types from what I understand. Wizards who are in the Magic Enforcement Administration, or MEA for short. This is the group Sari, one of the main characters, is a part of. Then, there are wizards who are part of a group known as the Guild, who are against the MEA. The Guild was only mentioned like twice in the demo, so I really can't say too much on them. Then, there's the last type of wizard, Strays, those who don't belong to any group wandering the streets of Shibuya at night fighting for themselves. The other main character, Marin, happens to be a stray. While the general premise of the story is pretty cool, the demo alone isn't exactly enough to satisfy my curiosity about everything. I know a demo isn't supposed to show and tell everything, but man, I really feel like it could've just been a bit longer, you know? The cutoff point was so abrupt that it genuinely surprised me. But hey, that sudden cutoff was pretty effective. I nearly went and pre-ordered the game right then and there. Moving on now, something I want to talk about briefly is the visuals of the game. Don't get me wrong, the game doesn't look bad or ugly or anything like that. And it damn sure doesn't look like a PS3 game like I've heard a few people say before. But at the same time, it's definitely not the greatest looking game you'll ever see. But honestly, I'm perfectly okay with that. The art style more than makes up for the lack of graphical fidelity, which is something I don't really care about anyways. Still though, the jump from the cutscenes to the actual gameplay is just a bit jarring, so I thought I'd bring it up anyways. Plus, there's a surprising amount of people who judge games pretty critically based off how they look. So if you happen to be one of those people, just try your best to let the game slide, you know? Cause underneath all that, there's actually a pretty good game in here. But graphics and visuals aren't everything, and to me, they hardly mean a thing anyways. What really matters is the gameplay. And let me tell you, the gameplay here is amazing. Is what I would say if the demo wasn't so short. What I can actually say is that with all the mechanics it brings to the table, it feels and plays unlike anything I can think of, which is pretty nice. The combat itself took a lot of getting used to. I'm not ashamed to admit, I got hit way more than I would have liked. The game isn't hard or anything, it just took a while to really understand and get a grasp of what the game allows you to do. Basically, you have two modes available to you when you're out in combat. Suppressed mode and liberation mode. You can only attack while you're in liberation mode, and as you attack, your MP gradually drains, which has its own bar near the bottom of the screen. When your MP runs out, you go into suppressed mode. While in suppressed mode, you can attack. The only thing you can do is dodge or use items. However, you aren't stuck like this once your MP runs out. That's where the next mechanic comes in, absorption. If you dodge at the right time during an enemy attack, a circle will show up on screen. Once it's there, if you hold R1, the circle will gradually fill up. Let it go at just the right time and you will do a perfect dodge. On top of absorbing the enemy's MP, refilling your gauge and allowing you to attack again. However, if you mess this up, you'll either dodge and only get a bit of MP, dodge without getting any MP, or you'll just get hit. I'll be honest, this really took some time to get used to, but once I got the hang of it, I really started to have fun. Aside from the combat, there's a good amount of other stuff here too. There's a stress mechanic, which is a gauge that builds up when you talk to NPCs. As it builds up, your attack power will increase with it, but your defense gets lower at the same time. And if it gets to 100%, you will be forced into liberation mode, and you won't be able to talk to NPCs until it goes down. And then, there's two apps you unlock on your phone. The first one is just 
the messenger app, which lets you talk to other characters. And you can even pick the dialogue option sometimes. I know it's small, but stuff like this is always fun, no matter what game it's in. The other app is where you'll be doing your side quest. The Illegal Wizardry Dispatch app, or as most people call it, the Witch Hunt app. Here, you can, of course, take on side quests. But there's actually a pretty good incentive to do these side quests. You see, there's another gauge called the Malice level. The more side quests you complete, the lower the gauge will get, which will increase your reputation. Overall, the game has a lot going on, way more than what I was thinking anyways. I really wasn't expecting all this when I started the game. The last thing I want to talk about just for a bit is the art and character designs, cause man, they're actually pretty cool. I don't feel like the character models do the art justice unfortunately, but either way, going off of what I saw in the demo, as well as taking a glance at the website, the art seems pretty good. In the demo, Sari was definitely really cool going just off design, but overall, Marin was actually way more fun to play as, so I guess he was my favorite. I'll have to wait till the full game drops to get a look at everyone else though. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Overall, the game definitely has potential to be something really cool, but like I said before, the demo just felt way too short to really say anything definitive, but still, it was interesting enough to actually make me consider buying the full game, so I guess they did something right. Anyways, that's all for me. If you enjoyed, leave a like and maybe subscribe too. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.